hello students so uh, in our previous lecture we have seen we have studied the talk slip characteristics the basic talk slip characteristics and we have also seen uh, how, what are the various uh, parameters which are present in uh, in that talk slip characteristics and uh, thereafter uh, i'll show you uh, see the, thereafter we have also uh, derived uh, one second there is some risk let it be i have i have accepted the risk so now uh, thereafter we have derived the expression for maximum torque we have also seen what is the value of the slip for which maximum torque occurs and then here we have derived the expression of your maximum torque now one more thing uh, this is this thing i uh, means i put uh, important sign over here and so this is basically your assignment means you need to do this thing why because i i have given directly the formula because this formula is very important when you when you try to solve the numericals in many of your numericals this formula is also given in your ps bhimra book you can refer that book also so when you solve numericals uh, various numericals could be solved easily by using this formula in a very uh, means it will help you it will basically uh, reduce the time efficiency and also increase the efficiency so how does this formula derives you need basically you guys need to derive it at your home i'll not derive and it is very easy the derivation is very easy and one thing which i have mentioned over here this that this formula is only valid when stator impedance is neglected now what does this what what do you have what do i mean by stator impedance is neglected if you remember in in your previous lecture i would uh, i've told you that uh, this stator impedance means the value of r1 and x1 are very low and we can easily ignore those values and we can so that uh, we can even more simplify our system our induction machine uh, circuit okay so uh, in many of your numerical problems now what you will get you will they'll say you that this stator impedance is neglected many problems you will find this they'll directly mention this thing is neglected so that calculations are done at a faster rate so when this is neglected i have already already told you that if xm is very high we all know that xm is high so that rth is almost equal to r1 and xth is almost equal to approximately equals to x1 and vth is approximately equal to v1 this thing these things which i am mentioning over here i have already discussed about these things how they are equal to this thing so you can go back to uh, uh, i think uh, video lecture number 8 uh, i think so you can go back there and you can see uh, that uh, this is how it is done so when stator impedance is neglected this r1 is equal to 0 and this x1 is equals to 0 so you can directly substitute this rth equals to 0 and this xth is equals also equals to 0 okay so the expression is very simple and this vth could be replaced by v1 when stator impedance is neglected so you can replace and you will get this maximum torque expression from here and see this formula is what does this formula signifies this is your uh, electromagnetic torque at any at any slip say s okay and this is your electromagnetic torque maximum electromagnetic torque and uh, at uh, slip smt what is smt smt is basically the slip at which maximum electromagnetic torque occurs you can we have also mentioned this by alpha alpha smt is equals to alpha means the slip at which maximum torque occurs and this is your general slip at which this torque that uh, expression is given so we know that what is the expression general expression of torque is given by this thing t is equals to this thing at any slip s in this expression also you will put rth equals to 0 and xt xth equals to 0 and vth equals to v1 okay substitute th these things and then in this expression also again substitute these things rth equals to 0 and vth equals to v1 and all these things and then divide both the expressions and then you will see that you will get this expression xth is what your slip at which maximum torque occurs so this is very important okay so you will you can easily get this derivation and this is basically helpful the this is not exactly in your course but uh, i think this will help you in while solving many numericals okay for your gate examination okay so this is your alpha this we have discussed in your previous lecture also now we have also seen that for a well designed machine uh, alpha values of the, of the order of 0.1 we have seen this thing discuss it that is around 0.1 means slip is just 10 percent of the maximum value now this thing this is your what talk slip characteristics 
now what are we going to discuss is we will we'll go into in uh, deep study about this uh, torque slip characteristics see this is your motor induction motor this is your electromagnetic torque developed this is your friction torque right now i am talking about an induction motor which is running on no load means there is no external load applied on the shaft of the induction motor okay keep this in mind right now we are just talking about an induction motor which is running on uh, running on no load so only torque that is available opposing torque that is available available is your friction torque now at s equals to 1 means nr equals to 0 means at starting condition this is the starting torque which is available t is starting and you can find out that, that this line this line is your key friction this much frictional torque is available this is the opposing force now you can see that at starting i have told you in, a, in, in your previous lecture that in order in order that the, that in order to start an induction motor induction motor will start rotating only if your starting torque is greater than the opposing torque available now in this case the opposing torque available is only your frictional torque now you can see over here that this starting torque is greater than your frictional torque hence the electromagnetic torque developed at starting is greater than your frictional opposing frictional torque and hence the machine the motor will accelerate are you getting my point okay now what what is the what is the thing now it will accelerate obviously and whenever acceleration occurs then in this by seeing this graph what do you what do you say in which direction should we move will move from right to left why from right from right to left this direction from this side to this side from this side to this side why because this side nr is equals to zero as soon as we keep on motor keeps on accelerating motor accelerate rotor motor accelerates means rotor is accelerating and rotor is accelerating means at starting rotor speed was zero now rotor is accelerating towards nr equals to ns it is moving towards this speed okay are you getting my point or not but we also know that rotor speed could never can never be equal to ns why because we know that if there is in a practical machine there is obviously some frictional torque available hence this is not possible now through this diagram i'll even i'll explain you that fact also okay see now as soon as the now we know that the starting torque is greater than your frictional torque so now the motor will accelerate so motor will whenever motor accelerates it will move from right to left so motor will go go this side accelerate it will go on this torque slip characteristics motors torque will at starting electromagnetic torque was this much now this electro motor will accelerate and electromagnetic torque will keep on increasing 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 and at this point electromagnetic torque is maximum so it will still uh, accelerate why it will accelerate because this this electromagnetic torque is uh, in this graph it is always from here to here it is always greater than frictional torque so then so motor motor will keep on accelerating so motor will keep on accelerating now you can see it will come 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 then after this point it will reduce it will go through this thing this thing and at this point you can see that your electromagnetic torque is equal to your frictional torque now at this point both torques are equal that means there is no acceleration equal means what acceleration te minus tf t electromagnetic torque minus the uh, opposing torque gives you the acceleration if electromagnetic torque is equal to uh, your opposing torque then there is no acceleration no acceleration means what constant speed why because we know that dv by dt is your acceleration what what do you mean by acceleration dv by dt v is your velocity so d rate of change of velocity gives you acceleration if acceleration is zero if both these torques are equal that means acceleration is zero if acceleration is zero what If your acceleration is zero, that means that your speed is constant. So at this point, you can see your electromagnetic torque is exactly equal to your frictional torque. So now your acceleration is zero and your speed is constant. And at and at this point, let's say the speed of the rotor is an R naught. Why this naught? Because this naught basically represents your no load speed. So this is the no load speed an R naught. An R naught. And the rotor will keep on uh, rotating at this constant speed. It will not accelerate, and it will start keep on always. It will rotate at this speed. And you can see that this NR naught is very close to synchronous speed. Synchronous speed is over here, this point, and NR naught is over this point. So NR naught is very close to synchronous speed, but it is not equal to synchronous speed. Why is it not equal? Because of this frictional torque. 
let's say if there was no frictional torque then it will it would have gone friction torque was zero then starting torque is obviously greater than there is no opposing torque it will go there and it will come back over here if there was no friction torque then at this point torque will be electromagnetic t will be zero and acceleration will be zero and at this point and then the rotor will rotate at this synchronous speed this is what is given by your torque slip characteristics so you need to be you need you need to understand this torque slip characteristics very carefully so if in a practical machine obviously there will always be a frictional torque and hence you, they say that uh, nr the speed of the rotor can never attain uh, can never be equal to your synchronous speed so this is the thing so here at no load the speed will be this this point is known as operating point of the induction motor at no load this is the point okay are you getting my point so this is the operating point of the induction motor at no load you must be very careful about uh, careful about uh, this thing okay now i'll be telling you one more thing okay so uh, this is you can see that is this nr is very close to this this is the complete explanation i have written in, in in words so you can also go through this pdf so that uh, you will be able to understand it much more in a better way okay now this is again see we have uh, already uh, previously we have developed the expression of uh, maximum torque and we have also developed the uh, value of slip for which maximum torque occurs now this is just the uh, calculation for value of slip for which maximum power occurs maximum which power mechanical power power available at the shaft output power power available at the shaft for them for what so they are basically saying what what should be the value of uh, slip for which maximum mechanical torque occurs. Okay, not i'm not talking about uh, air gap power i'm talking about mechanical torque angles. so this is a slight uh, derivation and this thing is now obviously not in your syllabus i mean i'm in, in your rtu syllabus this thing uh, is but this thing uh, comes in your gate syllabus so i have just put uh, this slide uh, i've derived this thing this thing is also available in your ps memra book you can refer that book and um, so you can uh, go through this thing but uh, i'll not uh, means teach you this thing right now okay so this thing uh, you can go through this thing i just uh, mentioned these things okay now 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 i'll explain this torque slip characteristics uh, we'll further study this characteristics now earlier we were discussing the torque slip characteristics when there was no um, when the induction motor was running at no load but now we are going to discuss this torque slip characteristics when your induction motor is finally running at some load so now the opposing torque available is not only frictional torque but it is it is also equal to the load torque also there is some load torque and this tl t load t load tl2 tl3 tl4 these all are the external load that are attached to your shaft now the motor has to rotate these load torques also okay so now in this case let's suppose that uh, initially the in the this was the torque slip characteristics of an induction motor okay and initially the load torque available opposing torque available was t load okay don't don't look at these lines upside lines okay initially only this thing was available t load load torque available was t load now you can see one one thing that at starting i'll just tell you will this rotor rotate is this rotor uh, satisfy the conditions so as to the rotor rotate no it does not satisfy the condition how how can you tell it this because you can see that at starting when when your slip is equal to 1 means that your rotor is stationary this was the starting torque available this thing you can see from here at starting this much amount of starting torque is available but at starting if the machine is already loaded if you have put uh, this much amount of load on the shaft then you can see that th this load torque is greater than your starting torque so the motor will not accelerate instead it should be accelerate but how since motor is all uh, means stationary so it will not accelerate it is all, all it is already means at a stationary standstill condition so it will not accelerate why it will not accelerate because for acceleration this is starting torque has to be greater than this thing are you getting my point so it will not accelerate now how to run such kind of motor what to do for such kind of motor what are we going to do is that for such motors what what, what are we going to do is that we'll remove this t load 
at starting will not add this T load and will run this induction motor at starting at no load. Okay, at no load will will run this induction motor at no load. This motor will obviously accelerate. Why? Because this starting torque is greater than your frictional torque, so it will accelerate, 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 and it will come back and it will come to this point A. See, you can see this point, na? As we have seen in in, in the previous uh, slide also. So this will start rotating at this speed. This speed is known as NR not no load speed of the rotor. So it will start accelerating at this point. Now you can attach. Now when you attach the load on the shaft, see now what what is happening is that your rotor is already rotating at a speed which is very near to your synchronous speed. Say your synchronous speed was suppose 1500 rpm. So your rotor is now rotating at say 1450 rpm. Very near 1470 rpm. Very near to your synchronous speed. Are you getting my point? Now you can apply this load. Now when you apply this load, you will say that sir, still, still when you when we are applying this load, still the electromagnetic torque at this moment also is this much, which is less than this thing. Electromagnetic torque at this point A is what this much amount is equal to the frictional torque, but this is uh, less than this load torque. So still the motor could not accelerate. But now we do not want our motor to, to to accelerate. Why? Because motor is already rotating at this speed. So when 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 you will apply this thing T load, then instead, since since opposing torque is greater than your electromagnetic torque, then what should happen? The motor should motor should deaccelerate. So the rotor speed will go down. And I have told you that when motor deaccelerate, then we, then we, in which direction should we move? We know that when motor like motor accelerate, then we move from right to left, from NR equals to zero to NR equals to NS. This side we move from right to left. So when it, when it will be accelerate, we will we'll be moving from left to right. Okay, left to right. So as soon as we apply this load torque, then the motor will uh, which was running at this speed, it will deaccelerate. It will deaccelerate and it will keep on going this way in the uh, in the direction of arrow, and it will come to this point. So when this point, when it will come to this point, now we know that the electromagnetic torque is equal to the load torque. Now the motor will settle down at this point at a speed which is somewhat lower than this no load speed. You can see the speed at this point is something lower than this NR naught. At this point, the speed was NR naught, which was the no load speed of the rotor. At this point, this speed is something lower than NR. Are you getting my point? So this thing is very important. It will settle down because why? Why? Why would it, uh, at this point it will settle down to a speed? Because we know that at this point, electromagnetic torque is equal to the opposing torque available. And when both the torques are equal, there is no accelerating torque. And when there is no accelerating torque, that that means the speed is constant, velocity is constant. And that's why now it will rotate at a new speed, which is obviously lower than the no load speed. Are you getting my point or not? So this thing is very important. So one more thing, when when uh, when you are going in this direction, uh, this rotor will will slightly overshoot in this direction. Why? Because of the inertia. Rotor was actually uh, rotating at this point. Now it is deaccelerating, 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 and it will slightly overshoot uh, through this due to the inertia. Newton Newton's rule has to be followed now. So due to inertia, it will slightly overshoot over, uh, over this point B point. Now, when when the point when it will come to this point, now we know that the electromagnetic torque is greater than the opposing torque. So, more, so motor should accelerate. So, so it will again go back in this direction from right to left means in that in this direction. You can say in the arrow direction, it will again go back in this direction down down and it will overshoot in this direction. Again, now T is less than opposing force, it will deaccelerate and it, when it will deaccelerate, it will again move upwards and so on. It will keep oscillating at this point. And at one point, it will settle down at this point only. This is the equilibrium. This is this is similar to a pendulum. You must have studied uh, in your uh, lower standards. Are you getting my point? So this is how this induction motor rotates. So this is basic. This point is known as the operating point of your induction motor. The stable operating point of your induction motor. Now, why I have mentioned this point? Uh, why I have told you that this is the stable point of the uh, stable operating point of the induction motor? Because in an induction motor, you can see from this diagram that there are two operating points. 
this is also the operating point at this point also electromagnetic torque is equal to the uh, load torque see at this point why why is it uh, operating point because at this point electromagnetic torque is equal to the load torque but you can see that at this point also electromagnetic torque is equal to the load torque so why uh, why aren't we taking this point as the operating point because you can i'll say that this is the stable operating point while this is the unstable operating why unstable operating point because you can see if the more if the rotor accelerates overshoots in this direction let's say suppose it's overshoot in this direction now electromagnetic torque is lower than the opposing torque so it should deaccelerate so whenever motor rotor deaccelerate it will, it will move from which direction to which direction it will move from left to right so it will further move in the right direction left to right so again t is less than this uh, opposing torque again it will deaccelerate again it will deaccelerate and so on it will keep on deaccelerating and the rotor will finally stop so this is known as unstable equilibrium point while well, in a, a, at this point you can you have i've already explained to you that when it overshoots in that this direction the force will be in this direction when it comes in this direction it will tend it, its tendency will be to go again back to this direction so it will oscillate at this point but finally it will settle down at one constant speed but at this point it will not settle down to a constant speed instead it will make your rotor to stop finally so this is your unstable operating point okay this thing another thing now let's suppose we have removed this load and we have uh, attached another load TL2. This is another uh, different load whose value is even more greater. Now, obviously, the same thing will happen. Same thing will start at no load will go there, and now the stable operating point will be this point C. If we put this load, now the stable operating point point will be this thing. Still, the motor is operating. Still, the motor is running. At this point, the speed will be accordingly. At this C point, speed will be accordingly. B point, speed will be accordingly. But now. if we apply this much load you can see if we apply load torque tl not tl4 now there is no point on this characteristics at which te is equal to tl te is always lower than this load torque because this load torque now the load torque applied is is greater than the maximum torque this induction motor can generate now this load torque tl4 is greater than the maximum electromagnetic torque this induction motor is capable of generating so this will never means this induction motor will never start because even the maximum torque is less than uh, the uh, load torque so it will never start are you getting my point or if at all you are starting at no load then it will come slow it will uh, uh, slow down it will, it will finally it will come to rest come to stop your rotor will stop come to halt are you getting my point so this load is not allowed means this is the capacity this is the maximum capacity an induction motor could be loaded here till here tl equals to te max but do we really do that do we really can can i put uh, my load torque equal to this te max no generally yeah of course i can but generally we do not do this in fact the maximum full load that uh, that is applied um, in an induction motor is generally taken to be around 0.5 times maximum uh, te maximum this means the maximum full load torque load torque that is applied load that is applied is generally equals to half of this maximum torque available why because suppose i have applied this uh, tl3 okay suppose i have applied a load whose value is tl sorry whose value is tl3 so now when the rotor was so now when the rotor was deaccelerating at this point let's say due to the inertia it will overshoot at this point more than this point it might overshoot so now when when it overshoots then the machine will not work and it will stop immediately so in order to it will not uh, come back again na, because of the uh, this thing uh, unequilibrium this 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 is basically unequilibrium point so what we generally do is that we take your maximum load uh, such that full load torque is around maximum half of the maximum load so that's why they say that an induction motor is always capable of withstanding overload for some duration it is capable of withstanding an overload for some uh, 
duration of time. Now that's why, and, and uh, as I've already told you that that this operating point is stable, this is unstable. Similarly, this is unstable operating point. This is unstable operating point. So that is why this region from D maximum to this, this region is known as the op operating region of the induction motor. Operating region of the induction motor. And this is almost linear. You can see this is almost linear operating region of the induction motor, which is not exactly linear, but almost you can um, say that this is linear. Okay. So this is what uh, I need to teach you. So I hope you guys can kindly go back through. And this this is all the, all the, all these things are written um, in this thing. Uh, you can uh, study these uh, theoretical concepts uh, which I have written. Okay. So you will be able to understand it much in a much better way. Okay. So thank you very much. This is all for today.